Most people visiting historic St. Mary's City for the first time have one simple question. Where is the city? And the equally simple answer is right beneath your feet. Under the earth remain countless artifacts that tell the stories of many people that lived here before, during and after this significant place served as Maryland's first capital. Today, historic St. Mary's City is not so much a town as it is an opportunity, an opportunity to decipher many puzzles. With historical documents and archaeological artifacts as clues, we have pieced together fascinating stories for you to discover at this museum. Please take the next few minutes to learn about this National Historic Landmark and some of its many stories. Stories that go back centuries. Stories about a city built on dreams of a better life in a new world. A city that grew for 60 years then vanished, inspiring that often asked question, where is the city? So where is it? Where is the city? Evidence of its existence and many of its secrets were buried by time and dust for more than 200 years. The ideas and the issues first tested here are now at the very core of our American way of life. Welcome to St. Mary's City, the first capital of Maryland, the fourth permanent settlement in English America. Archaeologists and historians worldwide recognize St. Mary's as one of the most significant 17th century sites in the United States. Artifacts reveal an important part of these stories. Historical documents that survive add even more details. In the spring of 1634, after a winter at sea, two ships, the Ark and the Dove, brought 140 English settlers to the Maryland frontier. When the English arrived at what would become St. Mary's City, they encountered the native Yeokomoko people in settlements on both shores of what we now know as the St. Mary's River. The Yeokomoko, recognizing a strategic opportunity, welcomed the English with their ships and black powder weapons and encouraged them to settle in the area, effectively positioning the English as a buffer between the Yeokomoko and enemy tribes. After negotiating with the Yeokomoko leaders, the settlers acquired part of a native village and lived in the existing dwellings while building their new settlements. During the 60 years that St. Mary's City was the capital of the new colony, many seeds of our modern democracy took root, and some civil liberties we now take for granted had their fragile beginnings. One such civil liberty is the right for people of all races and gender to participate in government. Matthias de Souza was one such person. His story is one of an indentured servant who gained his freedom, became a trader of furs, and also served in the Maryland Assembly becoming the first person of African descent to participate in government in English America. My journey was not what I expected, of that there is no doubt. After all, a fur trader being part of the assembly? It only proves this is a strange new world indeed. Who knows what grand fortune yet awaits me. Unfortunately, Matthias de Souza's story is not a typical one, as the basic civil rights of many others were lost for generations as Africans and some Native Americans were captured and sold to European colonists throughout the Atlantic world to provide enslaved labor for the growing colonial economy. Another person of note involving civil liberties was Margaret Brent, a woman who requested voice and vote in Maryland's General Assembly. Tis true, men of the Assembly were grateful when I saved the colony, just not near enough to let me vote alongside them. They would have been wise to allow me part in governing the colony I kept from chaos. I had much to offer, but sad to say it was not to be. The notion of women voting was an unthinkable one to those in power at the time, and though she was greatly respected, her request was not granted. She was the first woman to raise this issue in the colonies, and though she was denied, it does not diminish the value of her accomplishments or the significance of her story. Civil liberties were just some of the many tests facing those charged with developing a new society in a new world. The question of how to balance religion with politics generated an especially large challenge as religious freedom was a relatively new and risky idea in the 1600s. As a Catholic in England, Cecilius Calvert, the second Lord Baltimore, was denied the right to practice his religion in public, as well as the right to vote or hold public office. But he would change that in his Maryland colony by setting in motion an experiment based on what he called liberty of conscience. 
a burgeoning intellectual and theological concept in England and in Europe. Lord Baltimore mandated that here in Maryland people could freely worship and that all Catholic and Protestant freemen could vote and serve in the assembly. Leonard Calvert, the first governor of the colony, was given the responsibility to carry out the ambitious plans of his older brother Cecilius, who had grand designs for his colony of Maryland, but was under no illusions that it would be nothing short of a monumental challenge. Indeed, he gave specific instructions to the leaders on how to behave on the initial voyage. Be very careful to preserve unity and peace amongst all the passengers on shipboard, and suffer no scandal, nor offer offence to be given to any of the Protestants. Treat the Protestants with as much mildness and favour as justice will permit, and this to be observed on land as well as at sea. These instructions would eventually evolve into government policy. This official policy in colonial Maryland was the first practice of religious freedom and true separation of church and state in the New World. A powerful symbol of this experiment of freedom and faith in toleration was the building of the first Catholic chapel in the English New World. It was built without government funding by Father Andrew White, a Jesuit priest. Later, an even more significant brick chapel would be built. Though innovative, this experiment would not last. By 1690, political change in England brought an end to the Calvert family's influence in Maryland. Soon thereafter, the capital was moved to Annapolis. Public worship of the Catholic faith was prohibited by the state, and in 1704, the governor ordered the chapel to be closed and locked. Lord Baltimore's mandate of religious liberty would eventually be revived, but not until the United States Constitution and its Bill of Rights became law almost a century later would government ensure a free exercise of religion and officially separate church from state in the very First Amendment? By the time of the American Revolution in 1776, mostly plowed furrows would mark the land where St. Mary's once stood. Today, St. Mary's City is being found again. Painstakingly, inch by inch, the buried city is being unearthed and gradually rebuilt with equal care so that all who visit can step back in time. Back to the time when William Nuthead and his wife Dinah operated the first print shop in the southern colonies. Back to the days when Garrett Van Swearingen, a Dutch immigrant, ran the finest hotel in Maryland and one of the first coffee houses in English America. Back to an era of risk and opportunity when Robert Gates, a teenage indentured servant who started with nothing, could grow up to become a landowner and a prominent colonist. When I arrived on these shores as a boy indenture, green and wide-eyed, I had plenty to hope for and much to fear. Many fellow servants with whom I worked shoulder to shoulder, seasoned to death, I crossed myself with prayer, labored day in and day out, and now I be rewarded with God's blessing. 1,100 acres of land to call my own with a household to run it. Maryland truly is a land of opportunity. That is, if you can manage to live long enough. The beauty of St. Mary's is in the details and the stories that shape them. There are many stories to hear, people to meet, and places to visit at historic St. Mary City and all of our sites are just a short walk or drive away. Feel free to grab a snack and shop for unique colonial-style home goods, books, and toys at the shop at Farthing's Ordinary. Visit the recreated print shop to see a movable type printing press. Come explore the Spray Plantation's period gardens, crops, and livestock. You may even meet a colonist or two. Play a colonial game at the town center and imagine 17th century accommodations or learn about the more serious challenges of government in a new colony. At the Maryland Dove, we invite you to climb aboard a recreation of a coastal trading vessel and enjoy the St. Mary's River landscape that has changed so little from colonial times. Enter a witch hut or longhouse at the Woodland Indian Hamlet and learn how the local Indians use the nearby tidewater resources to support a culturally rich way of life. At the award-winning St. John Site Museum, find out how historians and archeologists learn about the past and see the excavated foundation of one of Maryland's most important historic sites. Another site not to be missed is the reconstructed 1660s chapel. 
an architectural achievement, today it stands as a testament to those that lived and died here over three centuries ago. In the fields surrounding the chapel, as many as 500 of Maryland's founders lie in unmarked graves. Inside, we invite you to enjoy the chapel's simple beauty. Visit the lead coffin exhibit in the north transept of the chapel, or just take a moment or two to relax in this open and significant space. Near to the chapel is the Mackle Barn exhibit, which honors Maryland's agricultural history and one of the state's oldest farm structures dating back to the 1780s. Explore St. Mary's 19th century history at the Slave Quarter exhibit near the Inn at Broom Howard. Here is an opportunity to learn about the struggles of enslaved people during the early 1800s and how their lives changed following emancipation. At St. Mary's City, people from three continents, Africa, Europe, and North America, found their lives and fortunes intersecting in ways they could not have imagined. I hope to get my own land. No one told me there were so few women here. I'll have here. my pick of the men. Excuse me, what is the what seasoning? What is the seasoning? What is the seasoning? Is it always this warm here? Is it warm always here? this cold well, here? Well, have children at least. Free labour, you know. So I didn't get my inheritance. I wish Wait, to marry you wealthy. want me to be a judge? You don't you have to pay tax to the Church of England. Day day dishes St Mary's City will long be a place of honoured memory for all. We welcome you to visit us today and to come back as often as you can. For not only do you know the answer to that simple question, where is the city? You know there will always be something new to discover its historic St. Mary's City.